Well, Boker Tov, Shabbat Shalom, good morning, and a Sabbath peace to one and all. It is wonderful to be here. It is even greater that when we come together, we honor and lift up the name of our Messiah. And I said, our Messiah. And you might be wondering, wait a minute, a synagogue recognizing the Messiah. Wait a minute, Jewish people do not believe that the Messiah has come. Well, I want to welcome you to Buffalo's only and therefore finest Messianic synagogue. We are comprised of Jewish and non-Jewish people who believe, yes, that the Messiah has come. And that Messiah is the person of Jesus, the person of Yeshua. And we do not, we have not come to that belief because we want great acceptance from everybody, because that hasn't happened. But we have come to where we are right now because we have followed a long train of evidence. We have examined the prophetical writings. We have understood many of the rabbinical writings and all of the many things spoken about the Messiah. And we've come to the conclusion that it is Yeshua who is the King of the Jews. And we celebrate his presence today. We celebrate as well the newfound freedom that he has given us when he came into our hearts, forgave us of our sins, and made of us a new creation. And upon that acceptance, we became endowed by the Spirit of the living God, who to this day and to the day that he would call us home, he writes his law upon our hearts. We are ever so grateful to the Holy One. We are all ever so grateful to each and every one of you here, and even more grateful to those who are joining us in live stream. God's blessings and peace to each and every one of you. If you have looked at your calendars, and speaking of calendars, our calendars for the new year have arrived, and you should find them on the table uh, at the doorway going towards our main parking lot. But if you looked at the calendar, this evening at sunset comes the onset of Tisha B'Av. Tisha B'Av is a day of fasting. It is a day of sorrow. It is a day of tears. It remembers so many horrible calamities that have befallen our people on this single date in history. But as sad and somber as Tish B'Av is, I want to give to us a different way of looking at Tish B'Av from the prophet Zechariah, chapter 8, and verse 19, we read, Thus says Adonai Sevaot, so says the Lord of hosts, the fast of the fourth, the fast of the fifth, the fast of the seventh, and the fast of the tenth month will become joy, gladness, and cheerful moadim. Therefore, love truth and shalom, Thus says Adonai Savoot, peoples and the inhabitants of many cities will again come. The inhabitants of one city will go to another saying, let us go and treat the favor of Adonai and seek Adonai Savoot. There is a day coming when all of these fast days, all of these sorrow days are going to be radically transformed to times of great joy. And the prophet would go on to speak about the regathering of our people to the land of Israel. That has happened. And the day is coming through Messiah's rule and reign when Jerusalem is going to be the joy of the whole earth. There's going to be a time when fasting and sorrow is going to turn, be turned into great joy and happiness. This is what we have to look forward to. So let us be encouraged as the days go forward because we serve a mighty king. And that mighty king does not change his written codes. He is forever the same, yesterday, today, and forever. And let it be the purpose of each and every one of us to honor him with all of our heart, with all of our soul, and with all of our means. We bless you, O King of glory the King of Israel, the Rock of Israel, the Holy One of Israel, that your presence and your strength, your power ever be so indwelling within us 
that you would bring to us a fullness of joy as we rest upon you. For this is the day of Shabbat. We have come to seek your rest, that you would, that you would bring a cure to our troubled hearts, that you would bring a soothing to the things that disturb our soul and keep us from rest. Oh, Lord, you are the king of peace. And we pray that you would manifest your peace to each and every one of us, that you would bring a restorative healing touch to whatever is besetting us even now. For, Lord, we come to you through the authority of King Messiah. And let us say, Amen and Amen. Oh, Lord, the times are going to be changing. If we could please stand for the Matovu prayer. How goodly are your tents, O Jacob, your dwelling places, O Israel. As for me, through kindness, I will enter your house and bow down towards the sanctuary of your holiness in awe of you. O oh Lord, I love the shelter of your house and the place of the residence of your glory. I will prostrate myself and bow. I will kneel before the Lord, my maker. May my prayer to you, Hashem, be offered at a time that is favorable. O oh God, in the abundance of your kindness, Answer us with the truth of your salvation. Psalm 6 tells us, Adonai, do not rebuke me in your anger. Do not discipline me in your wrath. Be gracious to me, Adonai, for I am weak. Heal me, Adonai, for my bones are shuddering with fear, as is my soul. And you, Adonai, how long? Turn toward me, Adonai, deliver my soul. Save me because of your mercy, for there is no memory of you in death in Sheol. Who will praise you? I am worn out with my groaning. Every night I make my bed swim, drenching my pillow with tears. My eyes are weakened with grief. They age because of my enemies. Away from me, all you evil do evildoers, for Adonai heard the sound of my weeping. Adonai has heard my cry for mercy. Adonai accepts my prayer. Avinu Malkenu, our Father, our King, thank you for your mercy and for your grace. Thank you for your forgiveness and your salvation. Thank you for your truth and righteousness. And thank you, Lord, for hearing our prayers with such great compassion. The hardships and frustrations of your people have become overwhelming. The oppression has become overbearing, and we turn to you and pray for relief. We pray, Nachamu, 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 Ami. Comfort, comfort, comfort your people in Eretz Israel. Comfort, comfort, comfort your people here in this place. We ask that your mighty hand deliver. Deliver from sickness, disease, from sorrow, from grief, and from pain. Deliver from terror, from anguish, from broken hearts, and from fear. Deliver us all from our enemies. Deliver us all from the evil one. We pray, Lord, gird us with your strength. Clothe us with your garments of salvation and surround us with your goodness. 
help us put on the armor that you have provided for us, for we are weak and we have nothing left within ourselves. We seek you, Holy One, and only you, for you are a provider, you are a sustainer. And we ask for your mighty, outstretched right hand to save us, to heal us, to revive us, to restore us, and to renew us. To save Israel, to heal Israel, to revive Israel, to restore Israel, and to renew Israel. For we pray for your healing power to go forth and to flow throughout the land of Israel. We pray for your healing power to go and flow throughout this place and throughout our land. And we pray for your healing power to come and to fill us all. In Yeshua's name, we pray, restore. We pray freedom. We pray joy. We pray peace. Peace in Jerusalem and all of Israel and peace for us here and for the land and for the people of the United States. We seal these requests in the power of Yeshua's mighty name and through his precious blood shed for us. Amen. Baruch atah Adonai Eloheinu velohe avoteinu Elohe Abraham Elohe Yitzchak velohe Yaakov Ael hagadol hagibor vehanora El elyon Gomel chasadim tovim Vikone hakol vizoche chaste avot ume viko elivne benehem lehaman chemobiahava Melech oze umoshiach umagen Baruchata adonai magen avraham Atagi borle olam adonai Mechaye metimata Rahav lehoshia Mechalkel chayim bechesed Mechaye metim berachamim rabim So mech noflim verofe cholim Umatir asurim Umekayem emunato the shane yafa mi kamocha bal gevurot umi dohomelach melech me mi hitu mechaye umat mi acheshua bene amanata the hachayot me team baruchata adonai nechaye ha me team. Blessed are you, O Lord, our God, and God of our fathers, God of Abraham, God of Isaac, and God of Jacob, God who is great, mighty, and awesome. You bestow loving kindness and create all things. Who recalls the patriarch's love for you and brings a redeemer to the children of their children for the sake of your name? O King, helper, redeemer, and shield, blessed are you, O Lord, our shield of Abraham. You are mighty forever. You call the dead to immortal life. You are mighty to save. You sustain the living with kindness, and in great mercy call the dead to everlasting life. You support the fallen, you heal the sick, you release the confined, and keep faith with those that sleep in the dust. Who is like unto you, O master of mighty deeds? And who is comparable to you, O king, who decrees death and restores life and makes sprout salvation? And faithful are you to revive the dead. Blessed are you, O Lord, who revives the dead. Shema Yisrael, Adonai Eloheinu, Adonai Echad, Baruch Shem Kevod, Malchuto Leolam Vaed. Behavta et Adonai Elochecha, Bechol Vavcha, Uchol Nafshecha, Uchol Mildecha. 
והיו הדברים האלה. אשר אנכי מצבך היום על לבבך, ושיננתם לבינך, ודיברת בם, ושבתך בביתך, ובלכתך בדרך, ושכפך ובחמך, וקשתם להיות על ידך, והיו לתותפות בין עיניך, וכתבתם על מזוזות ביתך ובישרך. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. Blessed be the name of his glorious majesty forever and ever. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your means. And these words which I command you today shall be upon your heart. Teach them diligently to your children, and talk of them when you sit in your house, when you walk on the road, when you lie down, and when you rise up. Bind them for a sign upon your hand, and for frontlets between your eyes. Write them upon the doorposts of your house, and upon your gates. We're going to uh, continue with the introduction of our Torah readings today. Our readings for today establish an, exclus an exclusiveness to Israel's relationship with, with their God. And as the events unfold, as the readings unfold and connect, they will establish a progressive identifying mark and an understanding of how God always wanted his people to view him. In the case of Israel, deliverance cannot be separated from identity. God was so specific as to where he was sending them, what land he was sending them to, and where they were going, but he was just as specific about the areas they would have to pass through and the peoples and the kings that they would have to pass through. God was, was very specific about it. Ultimately, our readings today are about kings and kingdoms. They are about authorities and connections. Commandments were given regarding these things. There were miraculous events that propelled Israel forward. But God also put safeguards in place to keep them from going back. In today's Torah reading from Deuteronomy chapter 2, verses 1 through 4, we, we join the narrative halfway through the journey. They've left an ungodly king when they were delivered out of Egypt from slavery. Now keep in mind that no commandments were given to the people as a whole until they actually left slavery behind. The need for order came, ironically, when they became free. It's the first time in 400 years that they actually needed direction. What did they know about structure at that point? They were under somebody else's rule. The need for Torah became even more necessary because they didn't know how to lead themselves. How could they possibly? So carefulness was encouraged by the Lord because all they knew was the lash of an ungodly king in Egypt. And human nature is peculiar, isn't it, in that it always gravitates toward the familiar, even if the familiar was something unpleasant, and sometimes even ungodly. Israel wanted to go back to Egypt when they were in the wilderness, when they faced hardship. So in our verses from Deuteronomy, God is telling them to move forward with care because they're passing through a territory that was unfriendly and ungodly and was under an ungodly rule. In our half Torah reading from Isaiah, chapter one, verses 23 through 27, um, the narrative turns from movement to rulers, from places to people. A place is either blessed or cursed based on what someone has done there. It's especially true in the case of leadership. As Israel's history marches on, God does not only direct their comings and goings, he pays particular attention to who sits on thrones. Man is the one who causes the fall, causes the land to be cursed. Remember, the garden flourished before man was created. It wasn't the garden that fell, it was the man who tended it. In this reading from Isaiah, God is stating in no uncertain terms that it is he and he alone that can raise an earthly king up and he and he alone who will cause one to fall. And in our Rith Hadashah reading, there is a declaration of who the king of kings is. We'll be drawing from the account where Yeshua is before Pilate, and Pilate is asking him about his kingship. In the life of Messiah, we read about several kings. We read about King Herod, who was in place, and Caesar. At his birth, we read about kings who came to visit him. But not one of them ever made the claim that Messiah was making before Pilate. Not one of them ever could. Yeshua is making a statement of reclamation of all the journeys and all the travels that Israel had passed through and went through, of all the people's ungodly rule they had to be under from time to time, Yeshua is fulfilling everything that is promised. In Israel's history, there were two adulterous statements 
that were spoken by Israel. The first was from Samuel, we want a king like the nations have. The second was in the gospel when the religious leaders told Pilate, we have no king but Caesar. So in this account, Yeshua is making this declaration and abolishing all that and correcting all that. God is desirous that his people not only live in freedom, he desires much more, that he desires that they not fall under the allure of ungodly kings in this world. What these readings present to us is a God that delivered his people to be under his kingship. We're not to go from bondage to bondage. Israel was to be transformed from an ungodly kingdom to a godly one. The entrance into the promised land was not the fulfillment of deliverance. Yeshua's statement before Pilate was, it's not a foreign land that threatens us, it's who rules, it's whose rule we come under. Amen. Ein kamocha velohim Adonai, vein kemasecha. Malchutcha malchut kol olamim, o memsheltecha bekol dor vador. Adonai melech, Adonai malach, Adonai imloch leolam vaed. Adonai oz liamoho yitain, Adonai varech et amo vashalom. There is none like unto you among the mighty, O Lord, and there are no deeds like yours. Your kingdom is an everlasting kingdom, and your dominion endures throughout all generations. The Lord reigns, the Lord has reigned, the Lord will reign forever and ever. May the Lord give strength unto his people. May the Lord bless his people with peace. The Torah scroll in the midst of our community represents God's presence among us. Just as Yeshua, the living Torah, walked among us, healing the sick and raising the dead. So while the Torah is among us, we pray for the sick in our community, expecting that God will hear and have compassion on us. Adonai, Father of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, may you bless those in need of healing as the entire congregation looks to you and is praying for their healing. Please call out those for whom you are praying for healing. May you be filled with compassion to restore health and to strengthen and revive them. And may you send from heaven a full recovery, healing of mind and body, that there might be a recovery of body and spirit, soon, speedily, and without delay. In Yeshua's name, and let us all say, Amen. Venusu misanecha mi panecha, ki mitzion te tsehe Torah, ki mitzion te tsehe Torah, udvar Adonai, me Yerushalayim, Baruch Shenatan, Torah, Torah, Baruch Shenatan, Torah, Torah, Leamo Yisrael, Shato. And it came to pass that when the ark moved forward, Moses said, Rise up, O Lord, and let your enemies be scattered, and let them that hate you flee before you. For out of Zion shall go forth the Torah, and the word of the Lord from Jerusalem. Blessed be he who in his holiness gave the Torah to his people Israel.
Zion, for from Zion, for from Zion goes forth the law. For from Zion, for from Zion, for from Zion goes forth the law and the word of the Lord. Following along, it's Deuteronomy 2, 1 through 4. Vanefen, Vanisa, Hamid Bara, Derek Yam Suf, Kaasher, Daber, Adonoi Eli, Vanasav, Et Har Seir, Yamim Rabim, Vyomer, Adonoi Eli, Lemor. Rav Lechem, Tsov, Et Hahar Hazeh, Pinu Lechem, Zafona, the et ha'am zhav, lemor, atem of ovrim, bigvul, achechem bene esav, vo yoshvim, basir, ve yeru, mikem, benishmertem, ma'od. Then we turned and journeyed into the wilderness by the way of the Sea of Reeds, just as Adonai had told me. We went around the hill country of Seir for many days. Adonai spoke to me, saying, You have gone around this hill country long enough. Turn north. Command the people, saying, You are about to cross into the territory of your relatives, the son of Esau, who dwell in Seir. They will be afraid of you, so be very careful. Baruchat, Adonai, Eloheinu melech olam, Asher natan lanu torat emet, Vechaye olam nata betuchenu, Baruch ata adonoi, Noten ha torah. Amen. Vizot ha torah, Asher sa moshe, Livne bene Israel, Al pi adonai biad moshe. And this is the Torah given by Moses to the children of Israel at the command of the Lord.
for the half tour portion, I'd like to call up Ms. Ava Romeo. And you may be seated. Baruch Ata Adonai Elohenu Melech Olam Asher Bachar Bin Vaim Tovin Beratza Vad Ibrahim Hana Amarim Ba Emet Baruch Ata Adonai Chabocher Ba Torah Uv Moshe Avdo Uv Yisrael Amon Today I'll be reading from Isaiah 1, 23 through 27. Your princes are rebellious and friends with thieves. Everyone loves a bribe and chases after rewards. They do not defend the orphan, nor does a widow's case come to them. Therefore, says the Lord Adonai Tzavot, the mighty one of Israel, Oi, I will get relief from my foes and avenge myself on my enemies. Then I will turn my hand on you, purge away your dross, and remove all your alloy. I will restore your judges as at first, your counselors as at the start. Afterward, you will be called City of Righteousness, Faithful City. Zion will be redeemed with justice, her repentant with righteousness. Baruch Ata Adonai Elohenu Melech Olam Tzur Kuholamim Tzadik Bechol Chadorot Hehel Hnaman Haomer Veoseh Hamedaber Mikayim Shekol Devrav Emet Vatzedek Naman Ata Hu Adonai Elohenu Venaamanim Devarecha Vedavar echad midvar echa, achor lo yeshu vrekam, ki amalach neman vrachaman ata, baruch ata adonai, ahel neman bechol devarav. For the Brith Hadashah portion, I'd like to call up Mr. Peter Boyke. Samchenu Adonai Ohenu, but Bretha Hadasha of Malchut bin Ha Yeshua Meshecha, Behim Hera Yachzur Vigili Benu, Beit Barach Shimcha, Befiko Chai, Tamid Leolam Bayad, Baruchata Adonai Baruchu Uvoruch Shemo, Melech Israel. A brief Hadasha is from John 18, 33 through 37. So Pilate went back into the Praetorium and called for Yeshua and asked him, Are you the king of the Jews? Are you saying this on your own, Yeshua answered, or did others tell you about me? Pilate answered, I'm not a Jew, am I? Your own nation and ruling Kohanim handed you over to me. What have you done? Yeshua answered, My kingdom is not of this world. If my kingdom were of this world, then my servants would be fighting so that I wouldn't be handed over to the Judean leaders. But as it is, my kingdom is not from here. So Pilate said to him, Are you a king then? It is a tree of life to those who take hold of it, and happy are those who support it. Its ways are ways of pleasantness, and all its path are peace. Turn us, Lord, to you, and we shall come. Renew our days as of old. It's high
thank you, Tom. Please be seated. I've got a few announcements I need to bring to your attention. Uh, first of all, I, I just want to say that uh, Connie, the, the, the daughter of uh, Hans and Audrey, succumbed to her cancer. Let us pray for them. I mentioned, I believe, a week ago, if not the week prior, that there is a, a financial need. Uh, airlines are not, uh, not inexpensive, and uh, they've needed to get round-trip tickets uh, to and from Manchester, England. If uh, God should put it on your heart to uh, you know, leave uh, an anonymous gift towards Hans and Audrey, you may do so either through the uh, Pushka in the rear of our sanctuary, or uh, in any way you can on, uh, through our PayPal. But again, you know, thank you so much to everybody for your faithful support of this synagogue and for just coming through in the clutch with benevolence and being such an encouragement to so many people. So let's continue to pray for uh, Hans and, and Audrey. Uh, also, we are really in need for volunteers to serve next uh, a week from tomorrow at our annual picnic. We have some, sign, some, some people signed up, but please, this is going to be in the rear of our social hall, and I just want to encourage you to sign up. Uh, there's a lot of work to be done, but many hands make the work so much easier. And the beautiful thing is, when you work along someone, you get to know them better. And it really goes a long way to building up relationships and uh, friendships. Uh, a reminder as well that at the close of service today, we will convene in the social hall following our own egg for our annual business meeting. Uh, this is, uh, everyone is welcome. Uh, Non-members have a voice, but not a vote, but certainly everyone is welcome as we uh, make known uh, our, our, our financials and the activities of the synagogue over the past calendar year. Uh, I always have this thought that I'm missing something. I'm missing something. Uh, let me put in you know, a plug for Shabbat school. I began this morning. Uh, a series that's going to be the God of Israel is pro-life. And this is going to encompass, you know, a, a Jewish perspective, you know, on the hot issue of abortion. Contemporary Jewish thinking, which is very reform, is predominantly pro-choice. But our ancients and the writers of our, our, our the, Torah, the writer of the Torah, Moses, and our prophets have something different to say. Things may change over the course of years, but God is ever unchanging. So with that said, I guess I'm going to commence to the things that uh, God's put on my heart this past week. And the season, you know, now I just want to say, I have no need for uh, the, the prayer over our Torah portion, for the very text I selected was the very text my wife had wonderfully read before us, and there was no collusion. I had no idea, you know, which section from this day's parsha she was going to read from. And the seasons, they go round and round, and the painted ponies go up and down. We are captive on the carousel of time. We can't return. We can only look behind from where we came and go round and round and round in the circle game. For those of you who do not recognize those lyrics, they come from the great Canadian singer, folk singer and writer, Joni Mitchell. Last Sunday afternoon, my wife was able to link up to a live concert that it didn't feature Joni Mitchell, but she was there. And she did her first set in over two decades. 
as she had been befallen by a stroke and a rare form of polio. But she was there, and the organizers of the Newport Folk Festival were so thrilled that she was there, they brought her on the stage, and she did some of her favorite songs. She's not what she used to be, but still, you know, we're not who we used to be. But just listening to this amazing woman, this legend, well, it was very, very capturing of the heart. And the circle game, it just seemed to me to fit so perfectly with, days, with this day's Torah portion, where God, where, where God says through Moses, you've gone around this hill country long enough. Go north. You've circled this mountain too many times. It's, it's time to move on. And this circle game, that Joni Mitchell wrote. It's the saga of the human experience, that everything is cyclical. It just seems that everything repeats itself. All of life is a cycle. From the dust we were formed, and from dust we're going to return. However, this circle game has a way of also hindering our respective walks with God, our King that it's fruitless, and it exhausts a lot of energy, and it's painful if we keep going in circles, repeating the very same indiscretions before the Lord time and time again. So I've obviously titled my message, The Circle Game. I want to read again the, the, the text in, in English. Then we turned and journeyed into the wilderness by the way of the Sea of Reeds. Just as Adonai told me, we went around the hill country of Seir for many days. Adonai spoke to me, saying, You have gone around this hill country long enough. Turn to the north. Spanish philosopher George Santayana had noted, Those who cannot remember the past are condemned to repeat it. Similarly, British statesman Winston Churchill wrote, those that fail to learn from history are doomed to repeat it. We keep going in circles all of the time. And from our text, God tells Moses that you've circled the mountain long enough. It's time to go north. In other words, you have been going in circles long enough. Look up, move on. The whole scene is one that Moses has seen before. A generation earlier, he had brought the people to this very same place that they once stood. They were poised and they were ready to enter the promised land when unbelief set in and they were forced to go in circles for the next 40 years. Now there is a new generation for Moses to instruct. Now there is a new generation that will hopefully learn from the mistakes of their fathers and not falter to the sin of unbelief. What would this new generation need to know? What equipping would they need in order to proceed north to the land of Israel? Well, there's this little formula that I culled from Meyer Meisel's book, Judaism, Thought, and Legend. A tale is told of a certain sage who went to a physician noted for his wisdom and his saintly character and asked him for a prescription for healing the ills of the soul since he was spiritually sick. The physician answered, Take roots of humility together with leaves of hope and expectation and add them to twigs of Torah with roses of wisdom and place them all in the mortar of repentance and grind them well with wisdom and love and pour in some reverence too. Then place it in a pot and, uh, and, and light under it the fire of thanksgiving. And when it is cooked, wrap it in a cloth of prudence and shake it through the sieve of truth and faith and drink it in the cup of the will, never to revert to that evil behavior, and then you will be cured. 
This is a wonderful recipe for spiritual sickness. A new generation will need to stock up on this prescription. A new generation will need to be reminded of previous mistakes. But moreover, a new generation will need to be reminded of God's faithfulness during the difficult detours, delays, and dangers that they came upon in 40 years of wandering. To come alongside and to aid a new generation, God devised a teaching tool for parents and grandparents to instill in their spiritual heritage for future generations. And the intent was to prevent the next generation from going in circles. And God designed that the people would establish another memorial. And from Joshua 4, 19 through 22, this is the nature of the memorial. Now the people came up from the Jordan on the tenth day of the first month and camped at Gilgal on the eastern border of Jericho. Those twelve stones which they had taken out of the Jordan, Joshua set up in Gilgal. Then he said to Bnei Israel, saying, When your children ask their fathers in time to come, saying, What are these stones? Then you will inform your children, saying, Israel crossed this Jordan on dry ground. First of all, let's examine the date given for the crossing of the Jordan to Gilgal. The date was the tenth day of the first month. The Hebrew calendar essentially recognizes two new years. Therefore, the designation of the first month comes twice, and each of these are highly important. The tenth day of the first month can be the tenth day of Nisan, the day when all Israel households were commanded to select a lamb for Passover. Or this could also be Yom Kippur, the tenth day of the month of Tishrei. These are major moedim, major appointed times of remembrance. And both of these festivals are God's provision to bring atonement for a people and a nation that's just going in circles. Lost in the woods, just going in circles. And interestingly enough, Gilgal means circle. To prevent playing this circle game, you have three remembrances of extreme importance. You have Passover, you have Yom Kippur, and you've got the 12 stones that would serve as a remembrance of our entry into the land of promise. All three, you know, all three remembrances prepare us for the world to come. These memorials shout, this is what the Lord has done. The stones at Gilgal would remind the people of Israel in every generation of the power of God and how he had dried up the Red Sea as well as the Jordan River. The words when your children ask their fathers in time to come saying, what are these stones? Then you will inform your children saying, Israel crossed this Jordan on dry ground. This is so similar to one of the four questions of Passover, where the book of Shemot, Shemot we read, Now when it happens that your children ask you, what does this ceremony mean to you? You are to say, it is the sacrifice of Adonai's Passover, because he passed over the houses of Bnei Yisrael in Egypt when he struck down the Egyptians, but spared our households. The book of Deuteronomy, Devarim, words, it's a repetition of so many of things that have already been stated. And this perhaps is due to having a new generation being born in the wilderness, a generation not having been privy to witness the great miraculous departure from Egypt, 
the crossing of the Red Sea, or the revelation at Mount Sinai. And similarly, you know, I think, I pray, and I consider our current millennials and those of Gen Z generations were not around to witness what Yeshua had done in birthing the Messianic Jewish movement during the 60s and 70s and into the 80s. But that's a history that needs to be retold in the hopes that whatever new thing that God has prepared for the end-time revival of Israel, that there will be a precedent to remember and to be inspired by. It's one thing to long and remember those days, but I have every confidence that God is going to be doing a new thing with the previous newer generations who did not experience the Messianic Jewish revival of their parents. And the key to prevent playing the circle game is to remember what the Lord has done. Our times are bleak. It's easy to lose hope in God and get discouraged, but I remember what Adonai has done. He miraculously returned us to our own land after having been in exile for really more than 2,000 years. Who saw this coming? Few and very few. And two, I can still sense his voice when I meditate on his words and I direct my attention to him. He's faithful to his word. And the miracle of Israel is one that we shall always remember. Some people date it, you know, in 2,000 years of exile, but it was longer than that. Because when we were living in the land, we were under the dominion of the Greeks. We came under the dominion of the Romans. And there was also exiles by the great nations of Assyria. And all of these various cycles of, of, of life regarding that land, now we are back and we're going nowhere. Going nowhere. To not learn from the past or to not notice certain patterns will keep us going in circles. The circle game is that vicious cycle of stagnation, expending a lot of energy but never arriving at your destination. It's like running on a treadmill. You're going fast. You're expending a lot of energy, but you're, um, energy, but you're still in the same place you started. A number of years ago in our annual vacation in the Adirondacks, many family members planned a long canoe trip. They followed the advice of the outfitters who rented us canoes, but somehow we got off course. The route called for a portage of about 100 yards to connect from one lake to another. During this portage, the trail marker was missed. And for an hour, we were lost in the woods, schlepping 80-pound canoes, along with all of our personal items, and most of us were just wearing sandals. There was mutiny, folks. There was mutiny. And when they finally figured out, when the fifth mistake was finally figured out, we were back to where we started. Everything in the deep woods looks the same. It's easy to lose a trail marker along the way. Margaret keeps telling me we need to put out breadcrumbs. I'm probably eaten up, but no, no, she never suggested that. But there are trail markers, and we're thankful for the Parks Department for those. But the circle game is this perpetual going round and round in a chaotic frenzy and always returning to your point of origin. The challenge to all of us is in recognizing and rectifying our mistakes, recognizing and rectifying the issues that keep us going in circles. From Yom Kippur to Yom Kippur, how many times are we asking for mercy and forgiveness for the same stuff? How many times do we find ourselves asking God to forgive us of the same things all the time? How many times do we grapple with personal relationships? If you're misfiring with family and friends, if your circle of old friends seems to be diminishing, 
Maybe it's you. Although I want to say that you know, I lost a, a, another childhood friend yesterday, but this is what happens the older you get. But maybe the issue is you. Get out of denial and take responsibility for yourself. When you know the right thing to do, but fail to do it because of what it will cost you, you will continue to go in circles. Count the cost, humble yourself, learn to say, I'm sorry, or Adonai, forgive me, but don't skirt the issues. By faith, just do it. The enticing and trapping thing about going in circles is that the trail is always so familiar. The, an unfamiliar trail is frightful. We prefer going in circles because we know the route. One can pray for breakthrough, but if that's all we do, then we're deceiving ourselves because it's always going to look the same. What if Abraham played the circle game? He'd be back in Ur of the Chaldees and the promises God made to him and our patriarchs. We wouldn't know a thing about him. Or Moses, you know, he would have under pressure returned to Egypt for a do-over. How far do we want to go with the circle game? Would we remain in elementary school because we're fearful of the big kids we'll encounter in high school? Would we forever be living with our parents because the world outside is too intimidating? In Messiah, we have an awesome hope. In Messiah, we were given a new birth, and with the new birth, a new life. We have been spared from the wrath to come, and we have been elevated to sonship as heirs to the covenants of promise. But it's unhealthy for us to never go beyond that. These assurances are most comforting, and we need to know them. Let them be motivators for us to move on up to go north. For many, God is saying, you've circled this mountain long enough. Look up. Go north. To look up, to go north, to make Aliyah, will have its challenges. To go north meant having to deal with the sons of Esau. But God's command is also his enablement. And just a little note. You know, they had to deal with the sons of Esau. You know, you know, that little statement just reminded me of the amazing grace of God. His fidelity to covenant. We forget that God also made a covenant with the sons of Esau. And God remembers the pledge he made to Hagar, the pledge that he made to Esau, the, son, the, the, the brother of Jacob. He tells them, leave the sons of Esau alone. Don't bother them. The Jewish study Bible has an interesting translation of our text. You have been skirting this hill country long enough. Now turn north. Now, what does skirting imply? According to Webster's Dictionary, it means to go or pass around, to move along the edge. In other words, rather than meeting a challenge head on, you fearfully evade or you ignore the difficult situation. You offer excuses to yourself to procrastinate doing things that you know have to be done. You convince yourself, it's not my problem. It's not my fault. You know, there are many reasons we choose to skirt an issue. For reasons of pride, to reasons of saving face, we skirt sensitive matters. Put on a cheery face. We say all of the right things. We speak in spiritual platitudes, and we go through the charade of pretending all is well when we know in our heart of hearts that things are not well. And this is the basis of our Haftorah in Isaiah 1. The people brought forth their offerings. 
They prayed. They went through the motions of worship. But they didn't, but they continued in their idolatry. Whereas when God sought a genuine heart response, the people cast their affections on things that were worthless and on things that cannot save. And Rabbi Shaul speaks to the prophet's words by saying, in 1 Corinthians 3, Now if anyone builds on the foundation with gold, silver, and precious stones, wood, hay, and straw, each one's work will become clear, for the day will show it, because it is to be revealed by fire, and the fire itself will test each man's work what sort it is. The things we say and do in this life may win the approval of men, but it may not pass muster in the world to come. The things that we, that we do just for pride and for show will be as wood, hay, and stubble and straw to be burned away. Life will always be filled with challenges and setbacks, but for us, who have come to know the Messiah in a personal way, the creator of all of heaven and earth, our frame of reference is different from that of the world. In Messiah is life. It's not a circle game. Life is perpetual, ongoing, and eternal. There will always be a dream to pursue and a pur purpose to fulfill. Every stage... And every facet of life has its challenges, but they can also be the good old days. Marriage can be difficult, a difficult adjustment, but once adjusted, a couple can look back and say, these were the good old days. Rearing children isn't easy, but with it comes warm remembrances, and these two are the good old days. I would remind Margaret of that all the time when the kids were young. And as for my senior years, these are the good old days. I love being a parent, a grandparent, a husband. I love the life that Margaret and I have forged together. These will always be the good old days. It's not a circle game, it's going north. For all of the reasons we may have to continue to go in circles, let our primary focus be on God and him alone. He is our sure foundation in our wanderings and in all of our travails. Keep this truth close to your heart. Deuteronomy 2.7, part of this day's Parsha, for the Lord your God has blessed you in all that you have done. He has known your wanderings through this great wilderness. These 40 years the Lord your God has been with you. You have not lacked a thing. Folks, in all of our wanderings, in all of the things that we are going through, he knows your wanderings. And he says, I am with you. We're never alone in all of our struggles. We're never alone when we encounter Syria, you know, you know, a time in life where there's just so much sorrow, so much trouble. In this, God encourages us with the following truths. I've taken note of what you've done, and I will bless you. You have come this far. Keep going. I will see you through. I am mindful of your situation. I've not forgotten you, and you will not lack a thing. These are the encouraging aspects that God wants us to remember. The Spirit of God will always lead us to the living water, but he can't make us drink. The Spirit of God will always provide us with a heavenly manna, but we must have the appetite. Spiritual health or spiritual sickness is contingent on the nourishment that we receive. 
Going in circles is not what we want. Honestly, before him is the only way for him to give to us a clean bill of health. He can take care of every mistake, every big mistake, and it's time to break through that same old dull routine and start heading north. And in closing, Gilgal may mean circle, but Gilgal was a place of consecration and change. It was at Gilgal that Israel celebrated her first Passover in the Promised Land. The children of those who had wandered in the desert had not yet been circumcised, and Gilgal was that place for them to take on themselves the sign of the covenant. At Gilgal, God removed Israel's reproach and set them apart as a holy nation. Gilgal became a place of worship where the people brought their sacrifices and the sacrifices were received. And so, ladies and gentlemen, let us avail ourselves of the mercies of God to embrace his provision and to eat and to drink of the heavenly manna and to drink of his living waters. Let us come clean and asking for a fresh circumcision of the heart. This is where we derive our name. God writing his law in our heart. Moses expressing God's desire that he wants to circumcise the hearts of his people. Opportunity is right here and right now. Look, all of us are guilty of procrastination. All of us are guilty of all of the aforementioned things you know, I, I, I mentioned in my message. But God desires us to come before him with a clean heart. That when we come and we pray before him, it will not be like what the prophet Jeremiah described, that I'm going to hide my face from you. Let us come clean, and God will not hide his face from us. He knows of all of our wanderings, all of the heartaches and pledges to be with us. Messiah's last words, lo, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. Even to the end of the age. What I love about that, there is no expiration date. You must come clean by August 10th or else. But to the end of the age, let us stand let us stand in thanksgiving. Mighty God, a grateful people, stand in your presence. And Lord, of all of the things that have been besetting and hurtful to us, you enable us to make a clean start. Help us, O oh Lord, for we do not want to go and circle this mountain time and time again, that we would direct our focus to making Aliyah, looking up, looking to the land of promise, preparing ourselves for that glorious world to come, a world that will be under the governance of King Messiah, who will rule and reign over all of the earth. Restore us even now to the glories we may have forfeited, and may we come to you again with a rekindled faith, a rekindled hope, and a rekindled optimism. For you hold us in the palm of your hands. Oh, God, that your goodness just fall, that your peace just fall and emanate on each and every one of us. For those here, those joining us in live stream, may we make personal decisions, personal commitments this day to follow you with all of our heart, soul, and mind, to receive Yeshua, the Messiah who shed his life's blood as Israel's suffering servant for our atonement and for our healing. Bring forth wonders and goodness, O oh God, for we ask it through the matchless name and authority, through the unfailing words of Messiah. And let us say amen and amen. Let us thank and praise the Lord of glory. For he has done great things, and he continues to do great things in our midst. We bless you, O oh Lord. Oh, God. Let me close 
the ironic, ironic benediction. Should anybody desire personal prayer? Elder Mike and I, we're going nowhere. We're here to serve. But we would be more than happy to pray prayer of agreement if it so warrants. But we would be very happy to pray for you. Yivarechacha Adonai v'yishmarecha Ya'er Adonai penevu lecha v'yichunecha Yisei Adonai penevu lecha v'yaseim lecha shalom Adonai bless you and keep you Adonai make his face to shine on you and be gracious to you Adonai turn his face toward you and grant you Shalom. May we experience a day of shalom, a shalom that's predicated on our inner desire to walk with him with a whole heart. We have a business meeting to follow, but I don't want that to interrupt the joy of the Lord and the power of his presence in this place. At services end, this sanctuary becomes this wonderful house of prayer. And even though Tom has had to leave early today, we don't need music to enjoy the presence of the Lord or to make our petitions known to him. Let us settle our scores before the Holy One and he will grant to us shalom. Baruch Hashem. Bless you, Lord. Oh, God.